Watch this. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife because she was dead. He took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. 12 pieces, 12 tribes of Israel, a piece to each tribe because of what happened. And it was so that all that saw it said there was no such deed done nor seen from that day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day. So they said, consider it, take advice, and speak your mind. Verse 20, chapter 20, verse 1, watch this. Look what it did, though. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as what? One man. From Dan even to Beersheba with the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpah. These pieces, Saul did it, and it brought them on one accord. The Levite did it, and it brought all the children on one accord. Genesis chapter 15. God and Abraham, God promises Abraham a son. He said, as numerous as the stars, he shall have descendants. But then he also promised him land. And we know that when Abraham, when God said to Abraham, believe God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But he also promised him land. Verse 7 says, and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. Verse 8. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Watch, we pay attention to what God has him do. Watch this. Verse 9. And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Very quickly, just so you know, what Abraham is getting ready to do is was a custom of the day. But for those different animals, it represented the economic system of Israel from rich class, middle class, poor class. But anyway, this is what he's doing. So he has to collect those. Go ahead. Verse 10. And he took unto him all these. And what did he do? And he divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. He, the birds divided he not based on Leviticus chapter 1, verse 17. The birds were just supposed to be torn by their wings a little bit, but laid out flat. Go ahead. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. Continue. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, in horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Okay, that's what prophecy God was letting Abraham know that the children of Israel will be slaves to the Egyptians. And also that nation whom they shall serve I will judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. Go ahead. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Almost there. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed in between those pieces. That was God. Last one. Right there, right here. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying, unto thy seed have I given this land and the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now watch this. I'm going to show you what Abraham does because this is a custom of the day. And I'm going to use these cones for an example. And what Abraham does, he cut those pieces and he lays them out side by side. Calves, the rams, the sheep, the goat, the turtle dove. 
dove and a pigeon. And it was very common of the day. You come with me, Pastor, please, sir. And it was very common of the day, common, a custom, that whenever two of us come into agreement, this is what we would do. See, in today's society, if we want to come into an agreement, we'll make a contract. But if Pastor and I make a contract and I start bugging out, Pastor's going to be like, man, I'm done with this guy. I'm done. That's it. And the contract is over. Amen. But during this time, when two people came into agreement, come with me, sir. That hand right there. We would walk in between the pieces together, and we would share with one another the oath that we agreed to. Pastor, I promise that I will always be thy brother's keeper. And you could just say the same thing. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, I promise as long as you have the vision, I'm going to follow you as you follow Christ. That's right. Pastor, I promise that I will not lead these people astray, not one of God's children. I will be faithful and walk in integrity with this church. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, I promise to be faithful to my wife, and I will always take care of my family. That's the oath. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's what they would do. And so... What it represents was that if pastor or I ever broke our covenant agreement, we would end up like these pieces. It was a blood covenant till death. It's not these broken promises that are made today. A covenant till death. Come here, my love. Even marriage is a blood covenant till death. The truth of what God's perfect will is for each and every one of us and for our young people. And hear this, young people, because one of the things that my wife and I do for our daughters, we did this for my daughters when, for their sweet 16s. I have done it for all three of the four because the little one is not 16 yet. I veil her in representation of the very fact that later on when she gets married, her husband will unveil her. The reason why we do this, thank you, baby. The reason why we do this, the reason why God put it on my heart to do this so that they can understand and learn that they are supposed to wait until they're married to consecrate that marriage. Because I am her fa their father, they have my name and my authority. And so when I give them up over, when I give them over later on, I walk them down this aisle to their husband, I'm giving over my name and my authority to supply all their needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I'm giving it over to their husband. It is also symbolic to the high priest who goes beyond the veil for the day of atonement. The only one who could go beyond the veil is the high priest. He is the one to offer the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice to, for all the people to make atonement for himself and for all the people. He consummates the relationship between God and man, the children of Israel and their God. When he pours that blood over the mercy seat, when a husband penetrates the hymen of a woman, she bleeds on him. He penetrates. He is the high priest that goes beyond the veil. And that blood covenant relationship seals their marriage till death. It's a blood covenant. Don't let anyone, young ladies, influence you to surrender what God has told you to wait until you get married. Young men, don't get tricked by these girls with these skirts into believing that you got to be a man to have all the girls. That's a lie. Wait for your wife. It's so much better if you wait. It is a, it is a, and the reason why they, they, they reacted when they served them all the pieces is because of the very fact this is a covenant between the children of Israel and God. Between the children of Israel 
and one another. The reason why they came out as one man and as one accord is the very fact that we have covenant relationship with one another. Hear me now. If you don't live according to the rules and regulations of this covenant, you will not receive the blessings of Abraham. I'm telling you. I shared this with the young adults. Any living organism that does not live by the rules and regulations that governs its environment, it will die. You take a fish out of water, the rules and regulations that govern its environment, it will die. Put a man in space without oxygen, the rules and regulations that governs the environment, he will die. If you don't live according to God's rules and regulations that governs our covenant with him and with one another in the house of God, you will die to it. And so don't get mad if you're not receiving the wave of glory. Don't get mad if you're not blessed and you're not seeing life your life blessed hallelujah by what by the prosperity that's in this church don't get upset with us at the very fact that you're not being healed when you ask for healing in jesus name it is because most likely you are not keeping the covenant with the body of believers in the house of god what does that mean pastor said every member needs to go through discipleship class that's the covenant Pastor said, you shouldn't be at prayer on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. That's the covenant. And I understand you have jobs and some people can't make it. But guess what? On Sunday, we have discipleship class at 830. And at 845, I'm sorry, 945, thank you, Pastor, we have prayer right before service. And most importantly, I know we had the pandemic, but the pandemic is over. We should be in the house, present in the house of God serving the Lord together. That's the covenant.